Hi everyone, let's talk sharks. Now, in front of me is Iron Man's display unit. Um, clearly shows Iron Man's twin tube construction. This is a nitro gas shock. So you will see size of the rod. You will see the inner, inner tube. That's where your piston is. Piston controls rebound. And down here, buried in the oil, barely visible, is the foot valve, which controls compression damping. So the empty space is the nitrogen, and this is the oil. So the nitro gas shock, the shock is the inner tube. The outer tube is purely a reservoir. If you see monotubes, monotubes only have one tube. Um, high performance monotubes, high performance, they put the hose and an external reservoir. Okay, why do you need nitrogen? Some people will say, oh, my shock's purely hydraulic. Impossible. Because just like a swimming pool, just like a tub, the moment I go in the tub, the water flows out. I occupy space. This rod occupies space. Look at the level of the oil. I push the rod in. The oil goes up. So you need the nitrogen to absorb the change in volume caused by the rod. Now, on foam cells, you don't have the nitrogen. Oil is filled all the way on top. It's supposed to hydrolock, but why doesn't it hydrolock? Because on the outer tube in the reservoir, there's a closed cell foam. That foam absorbs the change in volume and expands when the shock goes up. So um, basic difference, this is nitro. As you can see, you have a nitro chamber that's oil there. In a foam cell, oil goes all the way up. So you have a lot more oil. The foam cell shocks have bigger everything, bigger rod, bigger bore, bigger piston, bigger outer body, a lot more oil. The pros are the ultimate. They have the biggest rod in the business, the biggest bore size, the most number of oil. So advantage and disadvantage of twin tube and mono tube. Okay, like, like you see here, if I hit the outer tube and bend it, the shock does not really care. The outer tube is just a reservoir. What's important is the inner bore. Now, in a monotube, you don't have an outer bore. Anytime you kink the shock body on a monotube, the piston won't fit the body, and the whole thing just stops working. Now, why do 4x4s usually run twin tubes? Basically, because of the impact damage. That's number one. But the other thing that most people never talk about is travel. In a twin tube, the rod can go all the way down until it hits the foot valve. In a monotube, it cannot go all the way down because there is a dividing piston and nitrogen under the shocks. So that dividing piston and nitrogen occupies a certain amount of space. So monotubes have shorter travel. Why do monotubes have the reservoir in the hose to increase travel. So they remove the dividing piston from, the, from inside the shock, they put it in the reservoir, run a hose, so then they can u make use of the whole body. Why is this important? For us recreational off-roaders, or can we say for our daily drivers, we're limited on shock length by the original mounting points of a vehicle. So we cannot go longer because it simply will not fit especially on the front struts. The front struts, you have very limited space. So you just have to follow the OEM shock body. Now what Iron Man did, using the same compressed length as an OEM shock, you get a lot more travel. So that's why the twin tubes are the real, Iron Man twin tubes are the real long travel shocks. Now, now people will ask me, what about the shocks with an adjustment knob? You clearly see how a shock is constructed. If you put a knob under here, what are you trying to do? 
you do not change valving because valving is in the inner tube. So your knob has to go, okay, what a knob usually does is it, there's a small hole in the inner tube and the valve simply opens the hole a little bit. So when the shock does compression, there's a leak. When it goes up at rebound, there's a leak. So a knob just simply creates an internal leak. Why don't we run knobs? Because we believe internal leaks are not good. And it's a very inaccurate way of changing damping. The best way to change damping is on the piston itself and on the foot valve. Now, Ironman, the same as the other top brands, run speed sensitive valving. So people say, oh, if a car's running fast, it's different damping. No, it's speed of the shock rod. The faster I push the shock, like now, I push it slightly, it's soft. I slam of it, I can't, I can't move it. So that's speed sensitive valving right there. So there, soft, doesn't move, stiff. So the less pressure and the less speed I put on the shock rod, the softer the shock becomes. So a normal daily drive, it's soft. You hit a bump, it automatically stiffens up. You don't have to get out of your vehicle to change an knob setting. We've created the shock to give you a lot more utility. So you don't have to go out and do anything, just drive your vehicle. Now, now. Ironman shocks run rubber bushings, okay? This is from the Ironman box. It's rubber bushings, OEM style. You can even buy them from your Toyota dealer, Mitsubishi, Nissan, whatever your vehicle is. Why do we run rubber? Okay, we run rubber, number one, less maintenance. Number two, rubber is one of the best shock absorbers. It absorbs a lot of shock. It dampens a lot of shock. Now I have a Ironman pulley bush, poly bush. It's polyurethane. Poly is very stiff. As you can see, I can't even press it. But we use poly for leaf springs because poly is a good bearing. It likes to turn, but it doesn't like flexing. So on a shock, when you mount it, when the suspension arm moves, you have a lot of side-to-side -side flex. On the top, there's a lot of side-to-side -side flex. So you need the flexibility of rubber. If you put poly and it's stiff, what it does is it will try to bend the rod. It tries to bend the rod, what happens next is it destroys the seal. Then you get a leak. So some people will say, oh, my shock runs bearings. Bearings are very tight. Bearings are very accurate. True, but bearings need maintenance as well. Basically, every 10,000 kilometers, as the top um, shock brands running bearings claim, you need to maintain them, you need to lube them. But um, somebody will tell me, oh, uh, Baja trucks run Baja 1000 on shocks with bearings. Race cars run Parida car on shocks with bearings, yes. But how long does Baja 1000 take? 24 hours? How long does the Parida car race last? Seven days? It's a lot of kilometers but not that much. Even though you run a 7,000 kilometer race, it's gonna take you a few weeks, but then we expect our shocks to last in our vehicles for three years or more. After a Baja 1000 race, it's only 1,000 miles, 24 hours. What happens to all the shocks? They get torn down, rebuilt, new bearings, new everything, wait for the next race. We can't do that on our daily vehicles. So, that's why we run the simplest design. Rubber bushes, as Toyota, Mitsubishi, Nissan, Ford, or your manufacturer intended. Now I'll show you the different shocks on the Ironman line. This is all for the 200 series. This is a nitro shock, steel twin tube. As you can see, this size rod, original Toyota bushes, rubber and steel. Totally height adjustable, as you can see. Now, you adjust 
height using shims on the nitro gas. Now, as a comparison, this is our foam cell, still for the 200 series. Now you see the change in body thickness. You see the change in rod thickness. And the foam cell is still the same height adjustable design. So I'll show you. So you just insert the height adjustment ring, reassemble the shock. Now you have, that's a 5 mm ring. It's going to give you about 10 millimeters more lift. What are the rings for? The rings are for tuning ride height, fixing lean. It's uh, on the cyclists, motorcyclists, motocross riders, racers. It's a preload adjustment ring, actually, technically, to adjust spring preload. In the Philippine market, a lot of people use rings to lift their vehicles using stock springs. Very wrong. The rings are not designed to create lift. The rings are designed to fix preload and get the right amount of sag. All suspension systems have the right amount of sag. In our vehicles, a rule of thumb is 60 millimeters of sag. We have a video on our channel about sag. We'll post a link down below in the description. Now, I bring you the world's biggest, the world's strongest, the world's most robust 4x4 specific shock ever made. It's our Foam Cell Pro, still for the Land Cruiser 200 series. You see how big the body is? You see how big the rod is? The rod is bigger than both of them. Now, the height or the preload adjustment on the Foam Cell Pro is via rings. Then you install the coil seat. And the rubber insulator. And basically, that's how the Foam Cell Pro looks like. Now, advantage of the Foam Cell Pro, aside from the size, advantage is the amount of oil the threads on the body create more cooling surface. And if you look here, it's totally rebuildable. I can open that, change the dust seal, change the oil seal, change the piston ring, change the oil. But this is a three-year 60,000 warranty shock. We can do that after warranty. Before warranty ends and it leaks, we replace the whole thing anyways. So... Some clients like to change the oil maybe every 20, 30,000 kilometers or 60,000 kilometers depending on usage. Now, I have a constant question of people asking me about newly installed shocks being a bit oily on top. Sometimes you see oil here. Shocks are normally packaged with um, transport oil, they call it, or packaging oil. So the rods are a bit oily. There's a bit of overfill on the seal area of all the shocks to keep everything from rusting while they are in storage. So sometimes on the first use, the oil tends to seep out. You see it here. Just as long as it's not running on the whole body, that means it's not a leak. What we usually do is clean it, observe it. And if it continues to leak, then we replace it on, under warranty. If it doesn't, then it's all good. So here we are, Foam Cell Pro, Foam Cell Nitro, all running the same Toyota bushings down here on top. Now, the shocks have a plastic cover, which I removed for demo. So if you look closely, you see the three different sizes. And basically, that's it. If you have any more questions regarding how the Ironman shock works and the differences between the three, Drop us a comment down below. We'll be very happy to reply. Don't forget to click like, subscribe, and click the bell for more videos. Thanks a lot, guys.